morning, y'all. Welcome back to another edition of Jet Sports Corner. Back at you for April 20th, 2023. It's been a little minute since I've been on here, but here we are, man. I'm out in Cali, Long Beach, getting it in. You know what I mean? Got a, a scientific conference I'm attending here, so I'm, I'm enjoying the weather. Going to present my poster and then um, enjoy the sights and scenes and whatnot. But I'm also going to be enjoying that Sixers game tonight. Uh, game three tonight, 7.30 Eastern Standard Time, 4.30 my time, Pacific time and then we have obviously the eagles have been very active in free agency and doing some other things with the coaching structure as well so we're going to talk about that so uh without further ado um for those on youtube uh make sure you like subscribe share the video click the notification bell so you know every time i drop a video we're going to go into this this preview for game three sixers versus nets and you know it's sixers are up to nothing right now they're clearly the better team I think anybody with two eyes can see that. Most people think that the Sixers are going to sweep the Nets, bring out the brooms. Um, maybe the Nets can get one game, but for what I've seen in the first two games, I just don't, I don't foresee that. Because there's been some good, there's been a little bit, a few rough spots with the Sixers. But all in all, the Nets still don't seem to have an answer for the offense. All right, so, you know, you had game one. Ball was getting spread around pretty good. Great spacing. People were knocking down threes. I think we uh, set a record for three-pointers hit in franchise history. So you had Tobias knocking them down. Maxi obviously. James Harden looked like playoff Harden from the, from the Rockets again. He had the one crossover. And I've been with five seconds left on the shot clock. He caught the ball. Dinwiddie's covering him. And he takes a jab step to go inside the three-point line, pulls the ball back, and then Woody just goes flying on skates. And then James Harden steps back, knocks down a three. Yo, like, you know, pick your ankles up, dog. It's, it's, it's been that type of series for the Nets in, in terms of how they're trying to cover the Sixers because they really don't have any answers. You have Claxton, who's a switchable five, but outside of that, they don't really look like they know what they're doing in terms of their defensive assignments. They're, we are getting so many open threes. I don't think I've ever seen the Sixers get this many open three-point shots under Doc Rivers, but they are, and they're knocking them down at a high clip. So you look at game one, they went off. Game two, and B was a little bit quiet, especially early on. Wasn't getting a lot of shot, att shot attempts up. I think he only had about eight points in the first half or something like that. And he was very quiet in the second and third quarters, and he didn't still really start heating up until later in the game. Yeah, yeah, he got his rebounds. I mean, he, he put up, I think, 20, 19 or 20 rebounds, something like that. But points-wise, he didn't start getting more aggressive until later in the game, and I'm going to need him to do more of that because Claxton, as great of, uh, as a defender as he is, he's skin and bones. He's Skeletor. Like, he's not going to be able to stop and be when he decides he wants to get down in the post, body him up, and say, yo, this is, this is what it's going to be. Okay, bully ball. So uh, I need to see more of that out of Embiid. And we saw some adjustments in game two because every, every time MB gets the ball down in the post, down in the low block, they are double and sometimes triple teaming them. They're saying, look, if we're going to lose, it's not going to be because MB is going to get 50 points. That's, that's pretty much what the net strategy in my summation has, has been. And it's, it's worked as well as it can. But over the past couple of years, Joel MB, he's become a better passer. He's become a um, a better player at taking care of the ball. And you saw those two things on display, especially in game two. So people look at the highlights and they're like, where's be at? Why isn't he scoring? Well, when the highlights start, they don't really show him getting double and then kicking it out to a Tobias Harris or a Tyrese Maxey or a James Harden, getting these guys wide open looks. And that's why we're getting these large leads or why we're able to storm back even when we fall down by five or ten points. And going into this game, I don't really see much, too much different, especially you had Tyrese Maxey heating up. You know, look, game two, we trailed up to half, and, but we only allowed 14 points in the third quarter. Tyrese Maxey, fun fact, joins AI as the only 76ers players with multiple 30-point and five three-point field goal games in the playoffs all right game two maxi 33 points 13 of 23 from the field and damn near 50 percent from three-point range six for 13. so you know i don't look he can get to the rim he's fast as hell 
and and that shots water i don't really see how how much the the nets can change in this game all right and you can you, you know the, the only thing that i can see that the sixers can improve upon really is getting hardened to the foul line okay that's been an issue in this series so far he's only shooting what 14 percent at the rim and he's shooting 32.4 percent overall He's shooting 43% from deep. So you could look at that and say, oh my gosh, he's on fire. But when you can see that he hasn't taken a single free throw, he hasn't taken a single free throw in the playoffs, if I'm not mistaken. And he's not really finishing at the rim. So they're going to have to, you're going to have to clean that up. If you can clean that up just even a little bit, they're going to be spooky, really spooky. They're already spooky right now, but they'll be really spooky if you can clean that up. So, you know, you look at this, you know, going into game three, how does it play out? And, and some of the sentiments from around the league, it's not, I'm not saying anything that's that's new under the sun. You, you have people like Stephen A. Smith, you know, <laughs> talking about it'd be a damn shame if the series goes five games, to be quite honest with you, because in Doc Rivers' eyes, it shouldn't. Take them out, stop wasting time with them, blah, 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 to the end, end quote, right? That's that's pretty much the sentiment for game three and the, and the entire series. So, I have the Sixers winning game three. I think they'll probably win it by mm, four, four to six points. And then game four, I, I, I think that the Nets, they, they may be able to steal a game. They might be able to steal a game in Brooklyn. I, I, I don't know, but I could see, I would not be surprised if they could steal one game in Brooklyn. But I, I think that the Sixers either sweep them or, or win this series in five and then move on. Because you, you, um, you got you to gotta take teams like this out immediately you can't let them linger like a pest and let them you know infest the house no you have to sweep them up and get them out of there real quick because you have teams like the bucks and and um and the celtics waiting on you right it, when, if when you get past the nets you have to make sure you clean up these little issues i mentioned in order to be ready for those teams because it's not going to cut it against them you need James Harden, like I said, getting to the rim and finishing and be able to get more points at the line. And then the Sixers will be able, in my opinion, to be able to compete with the Milwaukee Bucks and the Celtics. You won't need them be to drop 50 to 52 points to beat the Celtics at the buzzer if you have James Harden getting to the line more. So those are the things that they need to clean up. And I think they, I think they can. I think they will. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. And then last but not least, I'll be dropping a video tomorrow, or at least when I get time, for the Tank Davis and Ryan Garcia fight, giving my breakdown, my predictions, and you know, going through this damn thing, man, because I'm so excited for this fight coming up. This is one I've marked on my calendar for the past three months, and it's going to be fireworks. Somebody's getting knocked out. I don't know what round or who's getting knocked out. I just know somebody's getting knocked out. There's bad blood, and it's an evenly matched fight, right? So that's all I got to say about that. Uh, leave your, your comments, concerns. Um, if you have other things you guys want me to talk about, leave it in the comments below. You know, Craig said it off. You know, feel free. I don't bite. Leave your comments there and let me know what you want me to talk about. And um, I'll be sure to do that. That being said, um, take care. Enjoy the game tonight. Go Sixers. Let's go get this dub. And then um, I'm going to be getting ready for the fight on, on Saturday. After I'm done doing my poster presentation, I'm going to find a nice bar, pub, or something. I'm going to check that fight out. No way in, in, in hell I'm missing that. Until uh, next time, I'm going to talk to y'all. Peace.